All right, yo, you know what? Let's let's get into it. Uh, yeah. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning into episode eleven of the Safe Point. Um, or twelve? One of those, right? No, no it's episode. It's, it's eleven. Is it eleven? No, it's twelve. I don't know. I don't know. I wrote twelve, but maybe oh, I'm shit. wrong. It is twelve. No, no, you're right. It is twelve. Okay. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Oh God. All right, let me do that. Again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us for episode 12. 12. Like, 12 episodes. Like Ocean's 12, not Ocean's 11. Uh, yeah. Episode 12 of The Safe Point. Um, man, what a day. Hold on. I am your host, Armando, aka Mondo, aka Chancleta. And my co host, Alyssa. Hey. Um, right here, Alyssa. You know, I, I, I was trying to make a con- conscious effort. Uh, to introduce ourselves this time because we tend not to do it. Um, no, we just thinking, assume. I was actually thinking we should uh, put that like on the on the template for our notes so that way when yeah. we're looking at it, like it's just like I'll do that. Boom, boom, boom. Um, yeah. Nah, I mean, also, you have two Y's in my name. I'll be. Yeah, it's okay. Yo, come on. <laughs> I'm so tired of that happening. Yeah, no idea. it's okay. You have no idea. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> On both of them too. What the fuck? It's it's cool. It it must have been like that last time though too. Maybe, but I don't remember. You said, I know you spelled Mabel's name wrong the last time. I did, so. I did and I put another Y. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what's up with this additional Y thing. <sighs> I'll fix that when I edit the video. Yeah, and we'll have the intro next time. This is we're just gonna hop into the topics today because. It's getting kind of crazy. Yeah, it is getting a little crazy. Uh, um, but this is a safe point. That what? I said, but this is a safe point. Yeah, so. and, I, and we get into we get into those things, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So I guess uh, I guess just I guess we can kick it off with the most recent thing. Me and Alyssa were just watching uh, AOC talk to yeah. uh, one of the founders of uh, one of the founders of Reddit. And some guy who they call stock guy, whatever, whoever he is. Uh, and they were talking about the recent happenings with the GameStop uh, stock skyrocketing and why that happened and what's going to happen, what could happen. Yeah. Uh, and kind of all the things that are wrong with the system that have, that have allowed something like this to even be possible. Uh, right. Uh, wrong with the system, yeah, but you know, system. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Well, there are things like, well, all right. You want me to get? You yeah. Want me to go off. Yeah, you could go off because you you know more than I do about the subject, and I'm still like learning as we do this. Yeah. Like as it as it goes on. All right. So uh, for those that don't know, um, you got to know by now. Like it's kind of crazy. This shit is insane. Um, if you don't know. GameStop's uh, GameStop, as we all know, if you're driving past a GameStop recently, a lot of them are closing, which is kind of crazy. I walked into one and it was like 70% off everything. And I went in there and of course there was nothing good in there. <laughs> of course there's nothing good in there. There's never anything good in there. Like you never. I didn't know those. that they were at that point yet. Yeah. I, I didn't realize. Well, like, so I have two GameStops by me. One that's like maybe a five to 10 minute walk away from me, which is like in a plaza area where there's like a Macy's a Marshall's, um, the whole nine, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like that kind of area. And then yeah. there was another game stop. I want to say maybe 20 minutes away from me, 25 minutes, maybe. Uh, and I'm talking like walking by the way. Um, like walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, like so walk in a car, I'm talking like literally five minutes and 10 minutes. That, that was like the difference between the two places. So okay. I always wondered, why they were so close to one another. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause and I was just like, you know, like with things the way they are, I was like, I'm surprised that there's two GameStops so close to, to each other. And, and like, they're like still in business. And lo and behold, the one that's like pretty far away from me is, is the one that's closing. Uh, so, so yeah, they are at that point. And so it's a biz- it's a, it's a company that's going out of business and uh in the stock market, you can do something that's called shorting the market. Uh, if, if anybody knows, there's a movie that's called The Big Short. And what that movie is about is ultimately, it's about this guy, um, what's his name? Christian Bale's character. 
uh, he's like the head of like a hedge fund and stuff. And he like basically makes like the bigger decisions, the final decisions. And he decides that he's going to short the market. People think that he's out of his mind because the market is bullish. The market is climbing. The market is booming. Why would you bet that the market is going to plummet? And so you short the market because you think the price is going to go down and you make money on the price of it going down. Uh, so okay. it's kind of like a bet against said company uh, mm -hmm. or against the market as, as a whole, if you're betting against the market. Um, and so some hedge funds bet against uh, GameStop. And I mean, like, I... I don't even want to say like it's a bad idea. I, it's within the rules, right? The way the, if you, you, you could say, we could discuss whether it's moral or not. Um, a lot of people don't think it is. Um, I was surprised to find out that one of the executives in my job frowns upon shorting uh, stocks. And I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, I work at a bank for those that are wondering. Um, that would remain, remain unnamed. Um, <coughs> and, and so... And so do I think like if is it a good idea to short it? Yeah, it's it's a company that's going out of business. Price of the stock is probably going to go down, and so you're going to make money off of that. Um, yeah. And so, but what happened is is some some smart individual online. You gotta love the internet uh, because if you do enough research, you can find out you know where money is going. You can find like a lot of a lot of information is public information, like like how many shares of of X companies and x things that a certain hedge fund or a certain bank has under a certain portfolio etc cetera, etc cetera. a lot of that information is public or there's there's um there's sort of services that you can pay to kind of get that information um and so like there's people who they just know things and so somebody found out through whatever means that uh groups of hedge funds had shorted gamestop um by like 130 percent which means like to short something in, in, in retrospect, and if I could put it in layman's terms, it means say Alyssa sells me an apple and I, or say Alyssa lets me borrow an apple. I borrow that apple and I sell that apple to somebody at, for $5 because that's what the value of an apple is at that time, $5. So I got $5 for that apple. I'm hoping that sometime in the future, the value of apples is gonna be less than $5. So that way I can buy an apple for less than $5 and give Alyssa her apple back. And that way I've given Alyssa back what I owed, which is what she gave me, which is an apple. And I get to keep as profit, the difference between the $5 I made and whatever price I bought the apple at, which is lower, say 250. So let's say I made 250 off that apple. That's, that's what shorting a stock does. That's the, that's the idea of shorting a stock. But say after I bought that apple, after you gave me that apple and I sold that apple for $5, say the price of apples never went down. Say there was an apple shortage and the price of apples skyrocketed. And say the price of an apple was $25 now. And say we had a contract and our contract said that by this date, I had to give you your apple back. Well, the price of an apple today is $25 and I owe you an apple today. So that means I have to go and pay $25 for an apple and give it to you. And so now I've lost $20 on my trying to make money off of this apple exchange. That's basically what shorting a stock is. And, okay. and that's how you can gain or lose money on it. And so okay. somebody realized that these hedge funds had shorted this stock by 130%. That means to short something, that means somebody's lending you uh, shares to yeah. sell immediately. And so that means that people bought 130% of the total amount of shares that are even available. That means they bought 30% more shares than there even are and mm -hmm. sold them immediately. That means there's more liability than there even are shares to cover the liability. And so somebody found out that that happened and somebody said, yo, if we just all bought this stock, we could bump the price up. And, For GameStop. Yeah. And all of these people who are betting against GameStop, specifically the banks, like I said, this is public information. Yeah. They know who has money where. And so somebody was like, yo, fuck these guys. That's literally, that's literally what happened. Yeah. Somebody that's woke up and chose violence and was like, yo, we can all buy yeah. GameStop shares 
and the price is going to go up and that's going to cause them to lose money and it's going to call and then the price is going to go up so we're going to make money as we're buying the stock the, the shares so now here's yeah. the best part like i said these are contracts these contracts have expiration dates so i owe you these apples by a certain date if the apple if the price of an apple is skyrocketing i have until x date to hope that it goes back down so I can buy it at a cheaper price and it doesn't cost me that much money. Mind you, I'm buying thousands of apples. I'm not just buying one apple. I'm buying hundreds, thousands of apples. Um, and so the banks are hoping that the price goes down and it doesn't. And so it keeps going up. And so now the banks, the banks feel the pressure now. The hedge funds feel the pressure now. And so what do they do? They either exercise their, their option there's a short option, which means they have to buy shares to be able to give back to who they borrowed them from, right? That's that's how that works. So the, okay. in buying shares, <laughs> they pump the price up even more. And yeah. so now whoever's still in a short is even more fucked. And, yeah. and that's what they call the short squeeze. And that's, that's basically what's <laughs> happening right now. They're fucking, they're and squeezing so them. They're squeezing them for everything. And and so, so the possibility for loss is endless. Endless. Yeah. So, so why did they... So them cutting people off from buying shares was to take control of the situation then. Yeah. To like try to like make sure that the banks don't lose money. Oh my is that God. basically... Because yeah. everybody, everybody was about to get on Robinhood today. Was about to get on all these apps. Because it's not just Robinhood. Robinhood was just the one yeah, that it's everything. chosen yeah. to, to be put, you know, put out and lashed. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. They knew that everybody was gonna go on and buy and buy these stocks, yo. And it was just gonna pump the price up. And I think that's what's gonna happen tomorrow. I told people. I mean, I woke I up. So too. And I tweeted it. I was like, yo, stock price might go down tomorrow. I mean, today, which it did, because uh, there was mm -hmm. no there was no buying. I mean, like it's just it's people scared of what's gonna happen, so they're selling. And yeah. and then it's the people who who are shorting the market, influencing it, shorting it yeah. more to to make it look like ah, it's just terrible. It's terrible. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so it's just really bad. I think tomorrow, my 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 thesis was that tomorrow, regardless of what's gonna happen, because I thought that they were gonna lift that that today, like after today. Yeah, like it was gonna happen for today. There was gonna be outrage, oh. and there was just no way that they were actually gonna be able to like continue doing that into into friday and so mm -hmm. what's friday friday is a contract expiration date a bunch of those shorts expire tomorrow i don't know how many but i know a bunch oh, of wow. them do. and so tomorrow goal is tomorrow pump up the price and force them to sell you have to sell today a lot yeah. of those contracts are going to be expiring tomorrow so that means you got to fulfill that contract today. That means you have to buy the shares so that you can return them, so to speak. Yeah. And what you buying them at? You buying them in the morning? You buying them in the afternoon? You buying them after we've pumped them up? And it doesn't even matter when you buy them because you're going to help us pump it up because you got to buy yeah. hundreds <laughs> of thousands of shares to fulfill your to shorts. Yo, it's, it's just a recipe for disaster. And so hedge funds have gone bankrupt and billionaires are upset and crying on the news yep and yo and yeah fuck them yeah literally honestly and it, um, it's their I own know, game I told, it's their own game I told they tried to plug up their own game they tried to fuck them. Yeah. yeah I told you I know someone that said that they lost 10k yeah. because of this Absolutely whole thing insane. and he, he doesn't have like he's not a billionaire or anything like that he's, he's just like us and I, he had money in both GameStop and AMC specifically and it, it sucks because you know Obviously, we're doing this to show them, like, you know, That's it's not I know just, people, yeah. People have lost money and are like, yo, I don't even care anymore. It's yeah, not, because you're, it's not even, it's not about the money. money anymore. It's never been, yeah. no, it's not about the money. And a lot, and to be honest, it should never be about the money, but it's just like, that's what, that's how you guys think that you can make us yeah. feel and like run our world. And as like millennials and whoever else, if you're a Gen Z -er and you took part in it, like literally took part in this and good for you you know it's just some of us like myself i don't know a lot about it so like i didn't take part in it but um if i knew more i think i would have you know like i would have definitely been like fuck this like let's just do it yeah. like who's what i got to lose i probably you're probably gonna make a lot of money at the end of the day and if you don't that's fine too 
dog coin wallin this is a dog coin update <laughs> i wish i could have a little <laughs> yeah go ahead fucking on the stream that's just showing dog coin right now anyways listen we'll give we'll give we'll give updates let's, throughout listen so that... i'm letting people know right now this is live at five <laughs> if dog coin hits 10 cents by tomorrow morning i'm never spelling dog without an e ever again it's dog. It's a dog e dog world. Let me tell you, right? Let me tell you. I hate it here so right? much. Let me tell you. Let me tell you that it's it's getting, it's wild out here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, and we checked out the oh, stream too. Super disclaimer, by the way. These this is not financial advice. We don't know nothing. No, and we know nothing. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I I feel like I super need to say that because I had a I had a good friend uh, hit me up the uh, the other day and was like, yo. Um, or not yet, not the other day, it was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yo, thanks, uh, thanks for like uh, the Nokia hit. Cause I had tweeted like months ago about Nokia. Yeah. And then Nokia popped yesterday because of all this madness that's going on. I, I still mm-hmm. think Nokia is a good stock just cause um, regardless of whatever happened yesterday. Um, right. But dudes came up on money yesterday. And then I've also noticed that just other people message me or tweet me and then like make reference to like something back to what I said. And I just want to let people know, I don't know shit. I don't know anything. I'm an idiot. And honestly, I don't think anybody any I don't think anybody knows anything. Nobody knows nothing. Yeah. I only know the price that it is right now and what yeah. I and what I think about the future. It's a gamble. It's like gambling basically. It's literally like, yeah. gambling. It's an educated guess like sure. Yeah. Sure. Is 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 betting on Amazon a bad bet? No. But can it go bad? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I bet I bet those dudes who bet against GameStop thought that that was guaranteed money. I bet they did, and then they, yeah. but they didn't factor in the one thing, which is just happenings, just the world. You can't, yeah. you can't, like who, who in that hedge fund was thinking, oh, these kids in this subreddit are gonna fucking take us down for sure in GameStop. No nobody. one, <laughs> no one, nobody. And of course, I, like uh, Brandon said yesterday on stream, I think uh, it's just that GameStop was collateral damage, basically. Like it just happened to be GameStop. Yeah, it it could have been GameStop. Um, and I, obviously this is probably big in the Reddit world as well, just because it is GameStop and it is surrounded by what we all deal with. A lot of gamers are on Reddit and it's just, it just so happens to be GameStop. And I think it's cool that GameStop is getting this shine, even though they suck. Um, <laughs> they, <but> suck. <laughs> they suck, you know, if you, you, we all shopped at GameStop at one point in our time. I recently over the years have just said goodbye. GameStop. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely You're have. Born any time before two thousand, you you've know. definitely had. You definitely, have. Um, and it was the only store we could go to at one point to actually get any game. Now you have more than just that in Best Buy. Uh, so Target it's and Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, yeah. That's why Amazon. Always, that's why I always thought that like GameStop dying was just gonna feel like a cultural shift. It wasn't really gonna change. Yeah, it, was, it didn't mean that we weren't gonna be able to get physical games anymore. I was just like, all right. Looks like I'm gonna get them. At I thought they were turning into Think Geeks, though. Amazon. So like, that's not a thing anymore either. Think Geek is not gonna be a thing anymore. I have no idea. I, have no I thought idea. that they were just gonna transition them that way. No, but... I know that they were thinking of like kind of reimagining Re- what their stores were, kind of yeah. like making them hubs. And I kind of like yeah, that like a idea. Think Geek. I kind of like that and. I it's like know. not just video games it's like memorabilia collect like collector stuff like that's oh. basically what think, that's what think geek is oh no. i thought that's what they were doing no, no no like this was like this was kind of like a like in like an os uh, oh. like, like, like they wanted to make like game stops like that like little like places oh. where people could hang out like oh like a pokemon center kind of yeah basically <laughs> so um which i which i thought was cool because it, it it brought back like mm-hmm. that vibe of I mean, you know, like you used to go to GameStop and you used to have the console there and you could play the games and shit. Uh, yeah. Demo and stuff like that. Uh, so it almost It's like going to an arcade. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of similar to going to an arcade for sure. But um, but yeah, uh, like Amari said, GameStop stinks. So, yeah, he also said he's trying to get into the dog thing. Yeah, and yo, and also, and that's why I will say, I don't I don't know, yo, if you made money off this, God bless your soul. I'm yeah, so for sure. I shout wish out to me. you guys. Shout out to you. I wish it was me. Um, Same. And yo, it'll be it'll it'll be you one day. I was talking to my it boy won't. the other day on the phone. Uh, or not the other day earlier. And he was like, he was like, damn, I can't get into to dog because he's not on Robin Hood anymore. 
And I was like, yo, bro, don't worry about it. I was like, I was like, this is going to be one. We're going to hit, you know, we just <laughs> haven't like, we've been late to a few parties. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. One day we're going to be gonna gonna get the it. first ones at the party and it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Damn. All right. Um, I don't, I don't know what to say though. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. I, yeah, I me either. Kind of crazy. I think, I think it's kind it of crazy is. what they're doing and shit. Oh, I also want to say like, I saw, I don't, I got, I'm speculating because people just could lie on the internet, but yo, people are saying that like they're from other parts of the world and they're like gonna buy GameStop stock. If they have not already, they're buying it. They're gonna pump this shit. <laughs> I'm just like, I am so Crazy. ready. I am so ready. And 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 them shutting down Robinhood is so crazy because I wonder how many people that owned GameStop stock own it on Robinhood. I'm I'm willing to bet that over fifty percent of the of the shares that got bought up in mass mm-hmm. were bought up on Robinhood. hundred percent. Yeah, because they, I think they said Robinhood is well. When we were watching AOC's stream earlier, uh, the woman on there was saying that it's like the Facebook of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah, really saying, fucked up, but yeah. she said it's like the Facebook of. of yeah. Yeah, and it's also like I don't know. It's not really like about the tax, but like there's just things that they don't do on that. Um, app or website specifically that other ones do so it, it makes a lot of sense yeah. that you know if they could buy it all up that they would on that app specifically yeah but it's it sucks that they did what they did today um especially if they're for the people like they say they are yeah. and, and it's so it's ironic. just ironic it's so ironic <laughs> like because i feel i feel like i feel a parallel with what happened with cdpr with uh cd project mm-hmm. red because yeah they they were the company for the people. They were like, yo, we're about what you want. We we give you what you want. We got the we got the updates. We got all that stuff. It's great. It's great over here. Look at them now, yeah, struggling to let us know. know. Yeah, and so yeah, and it's like look at them now. And I felt the same way about Robin Hood, and I feel like everybody felt the same way about Robin Hood. And it's kind of funny how fast they fall because mm-hmm. Robin Hood, in my opinion, is the reason why we're even here. Like, yeah, we're here because some guy thought of this idea that, you know, we can short squeeze GameStop and that that's what got us here. Cool. So this like yeah. pivotal catalyst of like a moment in, in stock stock market history. Uh, but it's ultimately if you go back years, it's ultimately Robin Hood that got us here. Robin Hood gave us commission free trading and forced all the other apps and all the uh, I mean, all the other uh companies e-trade fidelity uh charles schwab charles schwab was actually the first one that did it and then the next day everyone else was was on board and i think at that point it was already a year since robin hood had done it but i think at that point robin hood had already built a base of people mm. on that premise of we're giving you commission free trading and i don't i don't most people most people don't even know about stocks so i don't even think i can't expect most people to understand the impact that that has in a single trade, you used to have to pay upwards of $10 to make a trade just to buy something. So if I wanted to buy an Apple share that right now is like $140, let's say $150, just call it flat, $150. I used to have to pay $10 to, to do that. So I would get $150 share paying $160 because I'm, and, but here's the thing. It, if I were buying a thousand shares, it's the same $10. But you see how that's fucked up for the person who doesn't really have a lot of capital to work with? If you're yeah. working with a million dollars, who cares about a ten dollar like commission transactional fee? It's whatever right. compared to the cap you know, the money profit you expect to make off of your hundred, one thousand shares that you bought with that trade. For but for somebody who just can only afford one trade and it's just maybe just trying to build on that one Apple share, you need to make back that ten dollars that you paid for the trade to buy. Yeah, um, but you also need to pay the ten dollars for the trade to sell it and get your money back. So that means that if you bought a share of Apple at one hundred fifty, it would have to reach one hundred and seventy for you to even break even, and that's like an almost ten percent increase. And like yeah. some companies don't even see a ten percent increase in a year, so you would have to right. wait a year just to maybe break even, make maybe break even on a couple dollars. And so Robinhood kind of changed that and 
it freed up the way people could trade. So now I can trade freely. Now I can now I can day trade. Now I can maybe ride a wave of a of a of a stock going upward and pick it up here and sell it up top and not have to worry about a commission fee taking out most of my profit. And mm -hmm. you know, and people joke about people have jokes on Twitter about like, yo, I just you know just made twenty five dollars on the stock market. I don't know how y'all. I don't know. How <laughs> and, 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 and I know that but it's, it's a joke, but but I always tell people like when you're when you're like working with a small number like that, look at it more about like the percentage that you're like getting back. Like yeah. if you're if you're fifty dollars back is ten percent of your portfolio, that's that's great. Anybody would kill to make ten percent back. Now I, I, I wish that your five hundred dollars was five hundred thousand so that ten percent was actually something more. But right. it is what it is. Uh but commission free trading freed that up. And then something else that Robinhood does that I wonder if they're going to start to regulate because there's a lot of talk about options and stuff is that they let you do naked calls. And so like going back to like shorting the market, you can bet you can bet for a stock. You can bet that a stock is going to go up and you can make money off the leverage of that. And so you can buy a contract that says I'm going to purchase and each contract is worth 100 shares. So mm -hmm. you can say I'm gonna buy one contract, which is 100 shares of Apple. And the strike price is $150. And so let's say the price of Apple goes up over time. And towards the end of my contract, I decide that I want to exercise my contract. The strike price was $150. let us say the stock, the, the, uh, Apple's now $200. I could exercise my contract, buy 100 shares at $150, and immediately sell them for $200 because it's now worth $200. Uh, but my contract that I've had for quite some time allows me to buy it at $150. Or I could sell the leverage of my contract. I could sell the leverage that I have to buy stocks at such a low price. I could sell that for profit instead of exercising and buying the shares. Um, so a lot of companies force you to have to buy the 100 shares to be able to exercise the leverage. Robinhood doesn't make you do that. And so, oh. and so when you think about something like that, you could leverage like say a contract for Apple stock that is maybe like a $1,000 contract, but you don't need the ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 that you would need to buy a hundred shares of Apple to cover that leverage. Uh, and so Robinhood lets you play risky business with a little bit of money. And so there's like there's 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 a lot to gain in that, and a lot of people have made a lot of money doing that. Um, and so, but now you think they're gonna have to regulate that after what just happened? I don't know if they're gonna have to. I don't think they have to do anything. The game the mm. game was working just fine two days ago. <laughs> Still being there, started losing money. I think like they started crying on live television. Yeah, fuck them. Nothing's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, y'all got money. Stop. You lose yeah. a little bit of coin. You lose a little bit of coin. Who cares? You like we all lose we money. Signed up to the game. Like yeah. we signed up to the game. We like, came to bat. You don't think people who bought GameStop shares thought that they could lose that money? Yeah, hundred percent. Of course they did. I, I hope you I thought the same stop. too when you shorted them. Right. I hope you did exactly. too. Exactly. So it's kind of ass, but anyways, that's it's I mean, fuck biz big business billionaires, the yeah. stock market. It's just fuck everybody. <laughs> actually, I actually work in the markets like yeah. the bank too, so it's kind of funny. Just just interesting to see both sides. Yeah, my my coworkers got to write a got to write a piece on it. I can't wait to hear it. Oh, really? It. Yeah, I was like, we were in a meeting the other day, uh, like our team meeting, and I was like, yo, Peter, you're going to have to talk about Wall Street bets in an article. You're going to be so upset. I uh, can't wait to read it. It'll be good. It'll yeah. be good. Maybe we could talk about it when he writes it, if it's available for us to talk about and read. Yeah, I wonder, is he a boomer? Is he, I think he's considered a boomer. <laughs> he's a boomer? I think he's like oh, right no. at the end, like just at the cusp of like a boomer. Like he was almost oh. a millennial, but he ain't made the cut. Like, he's a boomer. Yeah, so like, that's why I just find it funny. I just find it hilarious. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> um, oh man, what's what's next? All right, all right, all right. We got that out. We got, we got, we got that out. Yeah. Um, shout out to everybody making money. Um, yeah, shout out to y'all. Be careful out there in the streets. Um, but, Please. Please. But, yeah, don't risk more than you're willing to lose. Uh, yeah. And if you make money, cash that baby out and donate a little bit somewhere. Yeah, for sure. I saw that they were doing Always that on Wall Street bets. They were like, yo, you know what? We're taking out these hedge funds. 
let's donate some money pay that <laughs> shit forward we out here becoming yeah. millionaires and shit you know i felt that i, I like that you need to make a person but yo uh i did a lot of talking <laughs> now you're gonna do a lot of talking let's jump into <laughs> resident evil yeah, so last week, y'all, Resident Evil, they came forward with an event. Your girl got to co-host officially through them, which was really, really cool. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to them. Yeah, it was, it was really fun, and it was a really cool experience. So if you were there, thank you for being there. And if you couldn't make it, that's perfectly fine. Um, but they announced that the game Resident Evil Village is going to be coming out on May 7th of this year. Um, this is one of my most anticipated games. It's, well, probably the only one outside of, like, the medium. Uh, everybody knows I love horror and they have a demo that's live right now that you can only get on the PS5 unfortunately but it's supposedly they said like they're probably going to do it on other consoles but as well but just for right now it's on PS5 um, I'm definitely looking forward to this game uh, I, I'm not <laughs> oh so, so let's go I'm definitely not scared though I played the demo I wasn't very scared I'm not afraid of vampires unfortunately but it looks like it's going to be a really good spicy, spicy story, which I'm excited about. Um, the real question is, is Mondo going to oh play? <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> is Mondo going to play Resident Evil? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't yeah, think so. I feel like that's too I scary. Kinda, I kind of want to go back and play 2, just because 2 is so beautiful. and uh, Yeah. And I think I'm just going to take that approach. I'm just going to play the game on easy, see if they give me a lot of ammo. See if they let me get hit a few more times than normal. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is it first person or, or is it third person? This one. I, I haven't seen... The, oh, the, the new one. anything outside of that, like, <laughs> weird vampire woman that, like... Apparently Everybody's like obsessed like with fetishizing about on Twitter. It's, it's not like, just guys. Oh, weird. It's it's not just guys. It's oh, women too. Oh, yeah, yeah non-binary people too. Like, everybody's oh, like uh, everybody's like obsessed with these witch uh, uh, vampire girls. Um, it's first person, like Resident Evil Seven Biohazard. Mm -hmm. Okay. But a lot of the other games tend to be third. Uh, but it's not. I don't know. I just wasn't scared. But like, I also thought it was beautiful. Like on the PS Five specifically, it looked amazing. Um, I'm. I feel like the demo was a little too short. I played. I think I played the Resident Evil Two demo at New York Comic Con, and it was a lot longer than this. So I was kind of like bummed. Oh, you were there. But they there. have. Yeah, I got a free shirt and everything, but I, yeah, look, my wa my washing machine Probably. ate the shirt. So Stop. rest in Stop peace. That. I swear, I swear. Um, but it was I, I enjoyed it. And again, shout out to Resident Evil. I was so shocked when I got the email, but it was just a cool experience, and they were really nice people That's to cool. like do it for. Yeah, yeah. It's like right up my alley, so it worked out that way. Yeah. Uh... Our guy Dirty Dan was uh, was streaming some Resident Evil Seven the other day, and Ooh. I, I found it interesting that it was in first person. I hadn't seen I hadn't seen yeah. that before. And it, I don't know. It didn't feel slow, but it felt like yeah. I guess it did feel like slow. And I guess I'm just I guess I'm mm -hmm. just so used to playing shooters in first person, and so they move so quick. Right. Um, but I I thought that was like an interesting point of view for that game. Um, yeah, I think it they did it. Immersive. And stuff. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, and they have it for VR, so that's probably why. Because okay, okay. if you did that yeah. third person, um, I'm assuming they might do that same thing with uh, Resident Evil Eight. That's cool. But that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Are, and it takes cool place after. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, after the very much. Of, of Resident Evil Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. So Chris, if anybody's a fan of it, like Chris, I know he's in Resident Evil Resident Evil Five. I haven't played two or three or four, so I'm not sure if he's in any of those. But um. Yeah, Chris from Five comes at the end of Seven to like help the guy Ethan in Seven, and then he goes to Ethan in Eight to like fuck shit up. Basically, Chris is the bad guy this time around, and he just fucks up his whole life. Um, oh but yeah, okay. it takes place right after Seven. Rivalries, I love it. Yes. Love it. All right, cool. All right, and that comes out in May. Yeah, May seventh. May seventh. May seventh. Right, cool. All right. Available for pre-order everywhere. Yeah, we're looking. We're looking out for that on May seventh. Then Alyssa, yes, Alyssa yes, yes. will more than likely be streaming that. Pretty popular. I probably will. I may or may not have it pre-ordered. Hey, may or may not. May or may not. May or may not. Um. All right. Uh. So next. Oh man, Skate Four <laughs> is coming out soon. And, yeah. Uh. There's some news that's tied to this. 
mm-hmm. a little bit that kind of like disappoints me. And I want, and I think, oh, really? and I wonder if it like is sort of tied to this. So, actually, I think it's part of. Hold on, I, I have to confirm before I say this. Yeah, because I just saw what I just saw the brief. I didn't see a lot, so I was just like, huh. yeah. So, so okay. I want to confirm that I have this correct. Skate Four is coming out soon. And mm-hmm. the next bit that we're going to talk about after Skate 4, so everybody knows, and this is going to be a great segue, is uh, Activision X Blizzard. It's, um, Activision Studio Vicarious Visions is being merged into uh, B- Blizzard. That's the studio that makes Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh. And so oh. a lot of people, part of that, part of this that acquisition being a big deal is... A lot of people think that they're not going to make those. They're not going to be remaking games anymore, and so like a lot of people think that they're not going to be the studio that remakes any Tony Hawk game, any of the like like three or, or Crash Bandicoot. Mm-hmm. Because they're merging with because they're merging okay. with Blizzard, and Blizzard specifically said that Vicarious Visions is going to be working on like Blizzard their stuff on their stuff. Yeah. 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 So what does this have to do with Skate Four? Well, I, it's it's just funny and timely how that's happening. Yeah, right yeah. as Skate Four gets announced, and oh yeah, because Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two and just came out not, last year. Yeah, it came out last year. We might, mm, who, a lot, I don't know if a lot of people were thinking it, but maybe some mm-hmm. people were thinking, oh, are we gonna get remakes of the other Tony Hawk games? Oh, for sure, uh, I thought so. Yeah, and so like, does this mean that we're not now? Because Vicarious Visions was that studio, and so or do we yeah. one from another studio? Or does now that Skate 4 is here, does that fill that void for a little bit and they don't remake those games? I think I it know. depends because isn't Skate 4 uh, Xbox exclusive? It's not on, it's never been on PS, like it's never been a Sony thing. It's only been on Xbox. Yeah, I don't know. Is it, is, is it a Xbox exclusive? Yeah. It, yeah. It's always been an Xbox exclusive. Otherwise, I definitely as a child would have played it or like as a kid would have played it. Um, but I don't know. That's interesting. Cause I thought it was cool. Cause Tony Hawk was always like, obviously a, a Sony game. So that's what made that cool. Yeah. Um, that they essentially got their own version of Tony Hawk pro skater for those people who maybe just grew up with an Xbox and never experienced a PlayStation before. But, but Tony, Hawk um, was on, Tony Hawk was on, on Xbox though. At what point? Huh? At what point? And skate three, skate three was on PlayStation. It just wasn't. Oh, it was. Yeah, and actually, and and we had this conversation before because I had mixed up one of my memories, and <laughs> in that uh, I used to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater One on PlayStation, and so like my original memory of play, of Tony Hawk is with PlayStation, but Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two, I had it's on Xbox. The ori- I had that for the original Xbox, and the reason Seriously? I know that, and the reason I know that, yep, the reason I know that is because. To that game, I used to listen to Jay Z's Blueprint on repeat, all <laughs> day, all day. Cause uh, Xbox with the Xbox, one of their like key features was that you could like burn your CD onto the Xbox mm-hmm. and listen to your music while you played games. And so I used to listen to because it was the only album we had on there. Uh, I used to listen to Blueprint while just shredding. Play. Yeah, that's interesting. My my memory with uh, Pro Skater One, Two, even Three has always been PlayStation. Yeah. Like I, but I had an Xbox, but I was playing like maybe like Sonic or something. I or like, I, but that's a really good point though because I, I didn't have to look up Skate to even see that it. Came I didn't out. know that it was on. But yeah, I thought it was an exclusive. I guess it's just how it's marketed. To be honest with you, that's like maybe, true. Too. Maybe Skate just like EA just knew that. That PlayStation More market Xbox. was was Tony Hawk, and that they liked their Tony Hawk games. Like I said, like the first one, yeah. maybe the first one came out. Uh, let me see, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One. Um, did the original come out for just PlayStation? Because if it did, I, can I think understand. it definitely before. It might just be because it was before the Xbox existed, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and uh, and so like, I could I can understand why a lot of people have. Like yeah, this memory of like... Yeah, 1999. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not mistaken, the Xbox was 2000. So like it came out before the Xbox. And so I can understand yeah, how sure. there's just like this cemented image of Tony Hawk being the the, the skating game for Sony. PlayStation. Yeah, for Sony. And then Skate comes along and it's just like, yeah, you know what? We're just going to own it over here. And, yeah. you know, carve our space out over, over on this side. And 
it makes sense. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then never mind. Yeah. But yeah, Skate is coming. They're doing. I think they have a new studio and a new development team um, for the game. Which I don't. If you're a fan of the game, I, I've never played it before. Obviously, I Skate either. But I'm going to um, because I'm, I'm sure it's going to be on Game Pass. You already know. Probably, most likely. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, well, it is not. I guess it's not a Game Pass game. Well, it's an EA game, and I don't know how long. Yeah, it is an EA game. Game Pass, but ah, uh, we'll see. But I still think it might, just because I feel like it's a heavy push for Xbox mm-hmm. specifically. Yeah. We'll talk about Xbox later. Um, for those who are dedicated to Xbox. Yeah. But yeah, the Activision thing was the next thing we were going to talk about, and I don't know what do you, so your your thought is genuinely that we won't get these revamps of the games. Not from like, them. I mean. It's clear. It's definitely not going to be from them because Blizzard said that they're going to be working on their stuff, and Blizzard doesn't make <laughs> Tony Hawk Pro Skater games, and so that's true. They make Diablo, World of Warcraft, yeah, so, Overwatch, Starcraft. So yeah. people people think that they're going to be brought on to make to remake Diablo two because they're remaking Diablo two, and that sounds uh, that sounds. Uh, this is the company that remakes games. Who else do you you know gonna bring on? So it makes I didn't think... complete sense why they would. Uh, why they would go and get them or, or like bring I them under officially <clears throat> that's crazy i didn't know that they were not i knew that they were going to focus on their games but i didn't know it was going to be solely just on their games that's kind of that's kind of crazy because you're right like we just got pro skater one and two last year i think they make fun. and I'm, just, I'm i'm assuming fans would want anything re- redone and they released a new crash bandicoot game last year too yeah so it's like yeah. what does this mean for not only just for like pre-existing games but like future games for these ips as well because i could see them making a brand new tony hawk pro skater yeah yeah you see like all the rumors of that like they're gonna be working on the new diablo 2 and that has me excited to be mm. um yeah so i've never played a diablo game before but uh, so good i mean it's premiered isn't it, shooter. Is it like it's such a i was gonna say isn't it is it dungeon crawly or no dungeon crawly e, yeah a hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent dungeon crawler. I actually, when, okay. uh, when I was playing, um, Hades, it gave me super Diablo vibes. Really? Hell yeah. I have a friend that's playing Hades currently and she was like, Such a great is game. this game just hard or do I suck? And <laughs> we had to reassure her that the, the game is actually yeah, very difficult. Hard. Yeah. yeah. If you don't get, I forget the name of the power up, but there's a power up that lets you regen health when you do damage. Mm. That is the power up. If you don't have that power up, you're not making it far. And it, yeah, because I, I think have, that was I have it right now in my current run that I haven't died on in a while. And I'm just thinking to myself throughout the whole run, how the fuck would I make it this far if I didn't have this? Because like <laughs> so many because there's just so many times where like I got down to like five health and then I just yeah. played it slow, got my damage in and then got mm-hmm. my health back up. And now I'm good. Whereas like if I didn't have that, I would be dead. five health. And I would have lost, you know what I mean? Like, so, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. It's, it's it's a fun game, though. I, 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 yeah, I've seen... I, I'm not, like, a dungeon crawly type of person, like, unless it's... Obviously, I've played Persona, but it also comes, like, with the whole that's style of the game. RPG, yeah, I feel like it's... Different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I never got into, like, the game, but I do think Hades is a beautiful game, and I yeah. watch people play, and I'm like, y'all are braver than i am because i would have raged qu- i've already raged quit scott pilgrim versus the world like three oh, times come on it's not even that bad it's, not even that it's bad. really hard it's very hard it's just the mechanics it's like yeah, you know it's, 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 it's very old game. school yeah and then they, it's an old school style, style yeah yeah but, yeah so it's a great i just game, uh, i love it yeah both of them are great games yeah. both Tell of them are great trifecta they got yeah. it. they got it on all fronts all mediums yeah all mediums. Um, all right. Uh, all right. This this one right here was. I think this was the first time that I read this on here. I didn't. I didn't hear about this. Um, oh, you didn't yeah. hear about Konami. I did not. I did not. Take this away. You... So, Konami goes bye bye. Maybe not. Uh, they announced earlier this week that they're going to be planning to restructure their internal departments starting on February 1st. Basically, they're going to do a consolidating thing, I think, uh, similar to what, um, who is it? Uh, Square Enix has done this and Sega has done this. And obviously, I don't know about Sega, but I think for Square Enix, it's proved to like help them versus like hurt them. Mm -hmm. And so when it happened initially, a lot of fans thought, fans of Castlevania 
Silent Hill and, you know, Metal Gear, Metal Gear thought that that meant the whole gaming division itself was going to leave. But they said no, that they're just trying to restructure it so that it functions better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I I don't play Metal Gear. I don't. I also don't play Castlevania. Um, but I I do play Silent Hill. Obviously, that's a game that I'm very invested in, and I I love. Uh, I feel like they very much Gorgeous. disrespected the creator. Yeah, I just feel like they disrespected the creator of Silent Hill, though. So I would prefer for them to lose it. Um, no offense to Konami, <laughs> but I don't know. I think for upcoming games, it may mean a delay yeah. in games, unfortunately, just because they are trying to figure things out and uh, across the board. Yeah. Just because of like, obviously COVID and Konami's in Japan, right? Mm-hmm. They announced a lockdown again. So oh, wow. I, I don't know. I think for them, it's a, it's probably going to be a good idea <laughs> to somebody say my name, Craig. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a good idea just if it helps them as a company but I wish they would give up the rights for Silent Hill to the creator because I know he's somewhere else and I would really appreciate PT yeah I hear that in like full force yeah that was pretty much it for Konami I just thought it was interesting because it was trending this week okay all right. No, that is interesting. I mean, I'm I'm expecting delays across the board from from everyone right like if you make video games just delay it don't worry about it. I'm yeah, like, oh, please. Nobody's in a rush. Nobody's in a rush. <laughs> After Cyberpunk, we're like, do what you want. We got, we got nothing to do. <laughs> right now, we're watching the stock market anyways. Like, do your thing. Yeah, true. We're Nobody got time for right now. We're busy making money so we can buy those games, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> sure. Um, <clears throat> nah, that's that's that, that's cool. I Sometimes stuff like that is necessary, though. You know? Yeah. Keep the ship afloat. Keep the, keep the boat running. Yeah. If, if it, it may means, be, if it yeah. Great games, if it means great games in the future... Especially for Metal Gear fans, I know that's like a big, that's a big, you know, franchise yeah. right there. So it's better. We got a few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got, a, right. got a lot of those. Those games are okay. Here. Those games are okay. Oh God, I didn't say it. He said it. No. For any fans out there, Stop. <laughs> they're, they're great games. They're great games. I think that they deserve time and effort and yeah, they do. Pain. They do. So the thing, it, I've never been a fan. I've, I've, I understand. I've read the lore and stuff like that. Watched the lore on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that it's, it's awesome. I've I've never liked stealthy games. I don't like stealthy stuff. Yeah, you're not a so, stealth. Yeah. I don't like slow pace like that. So it's never been. We're trying like, to still get like you that. to play The Last of Us in full before you hop on The Last of Us Part Two. It's free and it's and, and it's funny because I don't want to play because of the story. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. No. But you could just watch a video about it Greg instead wants of to talk. Greg wants to talk. Look, I. Oh. Greg wants to talk to you about it. He said we need to talk. Yeah, I know, Greg. I know. We could talk about it. We could talk about it. But the stealth, it's just like it And then you me. play Horizon. It me. That's okay. also stealthy. Yeah, and like but I stopped playing Horizon. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I realized that it was pretty stealthy and I was like, oh, come on, man. Like how that is very know? stealthy. Same thing with Ghost. As much, like, as, I, uh, as much as I love Ghost, I actually s- swear to goodness, I was I was doing so, you know, like there's like the main there's the there's the bigger main missions like when you're taking mm-hmm. a castle or something like that. So I was getting ready to take one of the castles and so I, I stealthily get in and I'm doing the tower and I'm like, oh this this ain't too much stealth. And so I get to the point and he looks around and he's like, Oh, there's a garden. And in the garden, there's a lot of soldiers and shit. And he's like, Oh, we're gonna have to get through there. And literally right after he said that, I kid you not, I was like, nah, dog. And I turned the game <laughs> off. And I turned the game off. I was like, I'm not I'm not even trying to do that right now. Oh, I was like, I was like, I was hoping that I could fight them. I don't want to crawl past them. You don't want to you I don't, don't want to crawl stop. past them. And and then when I eventually did it, I was like, oh, this wasn't that bad. But exactly. It's not terrible. It's just you're like, really, it's time consuming. That's all. That's all. It's just time. Yeah, it is a little time consuming. Time consuming. I'm so impatient. I'm so impatient. I understand. I am. I was the ghost I... of Tsushima. Come on. Come on. You need to finish that game. I do. Before 2021 ends. I'll give you that. Stop. <laughs> but it's Stop. January 1st, 2022. And it's still January, it by is. the way. It is. It is. Um, all right. Uh, oh, Borderlands is getting a movie and Tomb Raider is getting mm-hmm. an anime. That's mad yeah. interesting. That's super mm-hmm. interesting. Um, of course, it's Netflix making the Tomb Raider anime. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like Netflix is going to make all the animes we didn't ask for. 
Yeah. That's that's what they're going to do. Don't get me wrong. They're going to hit sometimes. Uh-huh. I feel like a lot of the time they're going to miss. I have my opinions on this whole thing. Yeah, all right. Um, Give your opinions. All right. And so you play everybody knows. You play Borderlands? No, but I I'm initially when I heard game about that. I am looking forward to it. I mean, a game. Oh, like a movie? Yeah, a movie, real life kind of depiction of that. Because it's kind of yeah. like, it reminds me of Mad Max. And that was like a yeah. Really cool movie. Yeah. Personally, I probably, I'm, I'm one of those people. I wasn't going to watch it just because I don't like to watch movie, video game based movies. Mm-hmm. But they casted Kevin Hart, and I happen to be one of those people that love Kevin Hart. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to watch it. And I also like Kate Blanchett, which is like awesome that she's in it too. So I've never played Borderlands, but I'm excited to see the movie. Great games. For sure. Great games. Yeah, for sure. Great games. Yeah. Now, this Tomb Raider situation, mm-hmm. y'all know. Raider, we just got, cool. I'm with Miss Laura on my channel. We, we just got, we just got done on Twitch playing the last game. It's the 25th anniversary for Miss Lara Croft this year, um, along with Pokemon. And oh, they God. said, yeah. And they said that we're getting a show and that we're not going to get a new game anytime soon in the, in the future. I, and I, I just want to throw hands <laughs> and I don't want a show. <laughs> I don't want a show. I want another game. I want another game. I just think, the movies have never been super, super great, in my opinion, as like a viewer and as like a fan of Lara. Um, I think that they have helped her, but like not in the way that I would want. And no offense, but I just don't want a show or an anime of her, animated version yeah. of her either. Yeah. And obviously they said the story is going to continue from where the last game, like from the trilogy, it's just going to be her in the tomb raiding aspect. And I think that's what sucks as like fans, like you won't get that experience you did when you first played Tomb Raider, like back in the day. Um, and I thought also it could have just been another opportunity for us to get like a, I know Lara's like the Tomb Raider, but you know, what if we could get like a girl of like color to be a Tomb Raider? I like that. Like a black Lara. Ain't That'd be so ain't awesome. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we're just getting an animated show. Well, shout out to Netflix. They need to make their fucking... <laughs> I, they need their coin, I guess. I actually wasn't expecting a another Lara Croft game, just because mm-hmm. those games typically come in threes. Like I was always, I was always surprised that we yeah, got no. like an Uncharted Four. I was like, I was like, damn, y'all, oh, y'all motherfuckers yeah. must have sold a lot of that Uncharted Three if y'all made another one. And yeah. Then, and then they even made the mini game with uh, uh, what the, the the ladies on the yeah, side, the ladies on the side, yeah. And so I always forget the name of that title, but. Me too. Um, I never and I played I never it. Played, I never played it. So it's super short. I hear it's good though. I hear it, it is really I hear it's good. Much like a, like Miles Morales. Like it's like a condensed version yeah. mm-hmm. of the game, and it gets straight to the point. Has all the, everything it needs. Full yeah. story comes full circle. It's just but it's Definitely. just short. And everything wrong. I appreciated Miles Morales. Could it have been forty dollars? Yeah, probably. Some some of us get that game for free. So. Oh. Oh. Wow. oh wow yeah you know okay um pros over there um you know but yeah I'll so, claim it. uh I, I wasn't expecting a i wasn't expecting another game in that i didn't expect a game this year maybe but like year, i just or like the, yeah. they said not in the future real, but, like, but mm-hmm. I, the thing is is i feel like you have to reimagine that um yeah that's true. i didn't play the games and i but did like this did the story end like you know like if it came full circle no no, didn't it? They, they, it's just like the beginning. I think it's just the beginning of where she like basically they wanted to tell a story of the beginning because all we knew was her raiding tombs. Yeah, they wanted to share a story of like how she became mm-hmm. who she is. Okay. Um, but I thought that could be a good aspect, like a good chance to like reimagine her as like an older Lara Croft raiding tombs, and like we get back into that element as fans. But it's okay if we don't. We'll just watch the. Well, I won't watch it, but I people like will watch the show. I. Do you, would you be, would you be upset if they remade the original? Um, mm, like remastered or just like remake the whole thing? No, nah, I'm talking like a like a Resident Evil Two remake because the original is like oh yeah, so like remaster like it basically. Game. You can't remaster that. Yeah, game. I wouldn't be mad if they. I wouldn't be mad if they like redid that whole like. Like they just made it they look better, and then they up. yeah, they gotta make it ground. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that because that'd just be a nicer incentive for fans who've been playing the game for so long. I don't want to say that that's versus... easy to do. No, like, it's definitely easy not. In the sense of you don't have to write a story, you don't have mm-hmm. to do this or that. 
Um, shit, you might even It'll be, be graphically use, just you might even be able to use the same voice acting from from the, yeah. not even hire anyone new. Like you know what I mean? Like you just yeah. get actors to do the facials, but um, mm-hmm. I think that'd be a beautiful game to redo because that game. Oh, for sure. If you if you go back and play it, she's in the caves, waterfalls. Um, like that's a there's game dinosaurs. That really beautiful, it's... yeah. That's yeah. a game that would really look beautiful. That could like take advantage of you know the consoles that we have today. Unreal Engine today, and yeah. that gives them that gives them uh gives you something you want, you know, another Lara Croft game, uh, two yeah. game, and then it buys them time to get that early do the, process, the show the early process of making game which is the story the how's what's yeah. gonna happen what is this game and then yeah and then after they're done remaking they can you know actually move on st- yeah move on and actually make a new game the show will think, work great, great simultaneously but yeah. yeah 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 who knows who knows maybe maybe who last knows? episode you know maybe last episode <laughs> teaser who knows you know who knows mm. Mm. they'll be like oh here's what's to come another season <laughs> Another we got greenlit for season two. I mean, I shouldn't be picky, you know. I probably get a Pokemon game before I ever, I'll ever yeah, get, get it. At least you're getting some content, you know. Some, yeah, some games I'm thankful to die and just, you know, like Left 4 Dead. I think yeah, speaking of right. uh, tomb raiding content, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Uncharted got pushed back. The movie? Yeah. Aw. I want to fact check. It's okay. He has that other. He has that other movie coming out, so it's okay. <laughs> I am in love with Tom Holland. I yeah, said that other movie. Uh, Cherry something. Yeah. I was going to... It's, yeah, so it's Uncharted crazy because I... Uncharted is not coming out in 2021 entirely. Like, pushed... Delayed out from... It's the pushed. Year. Yeah, pushed out. Oh, wow. Year. Is Spider-Man 2, like, also delayed till next year? No idea. No idea. Oh, okay. Well, I love Tom Holland, so I'm okay. He has another movie out called Cherry something. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Never heard of it. The only other movie I'm looking forward to... <laughs> If you have not seen the trailer, oh Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong, yo, let me tell you, that is a movie trailer. That is a fucking movie trailer, and that is gonna be a great movie. Cause I don't know. Not, I mean, if fuck, do I have to watch it? I don't know if you have to watch it. I mean, it's, I don't know. You if, didn't, you didn't really watch it. If, if it's gonna be on, that was a terrible <laughs> movie though. It was it's a terrible movie. <laughs> It was. You know, I spared myself the, the the sorrow of having to yeah. watch it. It wasn't. Yeah. You, know? you you should be happy I didn't watch it. You I'm be, happy for you. Should be looking forward. Yeah, you should be happy for me as a friend. <laughs> I didn't waste my time. Yeah. Uh, I am happy for you. <laughs> uh, but now, nah, yeah, if if it's on like HBO Max and all you got to watch okay. it and like for free ninety nine, basically, yeah, you got to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. really good. I, they got they got great actors and actresses. Um, Who's in it? Huh. Besides Godzilla and King Kong, who's in it? Uh, the uh, the girl from uh, the girl from Stranger Things. Uh, Never, the, you lost the me. Guy, the guy, uh, the guy who played a vampire in uh, what's this? HBO vampire <laughs> Wait. Show, True Blood, the blonde. Hold on a minute. That's what I know him from the most. I, I know he's been in other stuff, blood. but he's a great actor. Um, but yo, and, and and the trailer just looks like it has. All the different elements that that are gonna make a good story. Like, yeah, that that trailer was like super action packed, but you can tell mm-hmm. that like, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm calling her Stranger Things girl. I'm not great with acting. Oh yeah, Millie Bobby Brown is in it. That's her name. The girl that plays Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, but what's her face from um... the parts she's in are gonna be like heavily story driven and gonna be like yeah, because she was in the, the last or part of the lore of what's gonna you know be the foundation of this. Yeah, fight that Godzilla and Kong are gonna have. So it's gonna be interesting. And the woman from Black Panther's in it. Um, yeah. yeah, his right hand gal. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. No, Stenhouse. Yeah. Rest in peace, um, and said, "I need yeah, to see in a theater, ideally." Yeah, 100%. I need that. I feel like that's what sucks about like movies today, and just like in general, it's like we that, there's a new strain, <laughs> so. At risk. Yeah, like, what's gonna happen? Yeah, I don't even want. I don't even want. Oh no! I don't know. Oh gosh! We already got to deal with cyberpunk every day, so it's fine. Right. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. worse than that. But next on our list, uh, Sea of Thieves joins the dark side. So Sea of Thieves have announced that they're doing seasons now. I've never played this game before, so I don't really know the gist of what Sea of Thieves yeah. is about. Yeah, but, but I think it's cool. It's it. 
I've never played it, but I've watched a lot of people play it. Yeah, on me too. Like it looks, uh, it looks like and, a lot of fun. And I told, uh, I told Amari and uh, one of our other boys, Henry, that um, we gotta play that. We got, we got, yeah. gotta jump on that because it, it just looks like so much fun. It's just we're a bunch of pirates mm-hmm. riding around in a pirate ship, going from island to island, and then if we run into another pirate ship, which has, which has other people on it. And like I, what I love about the game too, which I think a lot of other games should start implementing, is uh, uh, proximity chat. Uh, and so uh, when you're around, yeah, so like people, you can away. hear them, um, even if you're not like in like chat with each other or like mm-hmm. on the same team uh, per se. And so like you'd be yeah. riding past the ship, and you can hear the other people in the ship <laughs> ahead of you, and they'll be nah. nah, nah. It's a great. That'd be fun. I've seen some amazing, like just hysterical movement moments come out of it, and so yeah, I'm so down to play that. And you already know it's on, it's on Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, it's I, yeah. People, a lot of people play it on Xbox. Um, I know people who have played it on Xbox. Yeah, I've never it's an Xbox game. I think it's just yeah. yeah I think so. Um, so I think it's really cool that um, that they're doing seasons because I think it's beneficial to people who play that game. I know it didn't take off like as big as they probably wanted it to on the level of like Fortnite. Um, but I still think that the dedicated fans that play it all the time are just probably happy that they get some sort of incentive now. Yeah, it's an incentive for other people, like casuals, to come back and be like, yo, yeah. you want some new shit? Let's do that. Is yeah. That, like, like I told my yo, we need to just hop in there. We need to hop in there. And I've, like, I've <laughs> It'll be a fun time. See people having sh- like battles like with ships, and, you know, like they have cannons. Yeah. And, stuff. and so you got to like run downstairs and like empty your fucking like- pirate ship. It's just, it gets hysterically catastrophic it reminds me of like uncooked like overcooked too oh yeah like, yeah everybody's got to do something or like this ship's gonna sink <laughs> <laughs> and you're crazy. all yelling at each other like no nah! yeah, yeah yeah i fucking love it it's just gotta gotta do that gotta do that um, definitely it's a good time yeah it's a fun game i've watched people play it's very fun yeah so yeah um, shout out to sea of thieves all right um the next thing is uh Actually, you know what? I mean, since we're since we're talking about Xbox, well, we'll we should just go to Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, let's yeah. let's talk about this this Xbox price. I know it didn't happen. I know it didn't happen, so we don't have to talk about a lot of it. But Xbox tried to yeah. put the price on us. They tried to like, you know, on y'all. us because I have I already have Game Pass Ultimate. But they tried to, they tried to they tried to raise it on the poor folks who still have Xbox Live Gold, and they were like, "Yo, if you pay monthly, which like I imagine I don't even know how many people actually do that. Remember I used right. to." I used to do that on like super off chances when I was like in college and I was like broke and I was like, damn, I don't got the sixty dollars to like renew for a year. <laughs> I really don't yeah. I'm gonna have to pay ten dollars for a month. Um, but yeah, raised the price from one month from ten to eleven, but then stopped giving any discounts for mm-hmm. any, you know, sequential months after that. Uh kind of sucks. Kinda ass. I mean, or rather yeah. they did give them a discount, twelve dollars. The the dollar mm. they raised the monthly, that's all that's the discount. <laughs> you don't have to pay that extra dollar we added to the monthly. It's it a hundred and twenty? Yeah, hundred and twenty. F- fucking assholes. Well, I I don't know. I, well they didn't do it anyways. So Yeah, too much of an they, uproar. They, they're not assholes. But like We kinda talked about it off off yeah, like off camera. It was just like what the fuck are you doing? Like, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing? Like who thought that, that was a good idea? Nowhere I don't care what service you're in. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. You could, you could massage feet. You could be a masseuse, right? Get a great foot massage. I don't care. I don't care what you do. You could be the greatest painter. I don't know, cause that's actually art super. Uh, 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 you art could be subjective. PewDiePie. So like for me, like, I might not pay a dollar for it, but somebody might pay a million. So yeah, uh, you could so be like anyway. the biggest streamer in the world. Yeah, you could be the biggest streamer in the world, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I think what we said is what basically what we had said about the whole situation is that like it's it was just distasteful you don't double, you don't for his performance. You don't double your price like that, no. especially no in a reason. pandemic for no reason. No, you didn't even on top of it. that. Don't on top of that. Don't double your price when you have nothing to offer. Yeah, um, y'all have no games. So what do you like? If Sony did that, which they wouldn't, I would understand because Sony is giving us new games each month on top of the games that. Big name games, big IPs that we just have if you had it before, basically, if you had PlayStation Plus before. Um, but y'all got no games, so what what am I going to gain from this? Yeah. Nothing. I think the I think the coolest thing, I guess, that came of it is 
free games are actually going to be free on Xbox now, right? You're not going to need Xbox Live Gold to play them, which I didn't even know was something that PlayStation didn't force you to do. I don't know. I've I've I've, I've had PlayStation Plus for so long that I guess mm-hmm. I never noticed. But um, I think that the larger conversation we need to have is that we shouldn't be paying them anything to play games online anymore. And yeah, and I need and I need people to understand how especially hypocritical it is to say that oh you're playing Fortnite a free game oh you don't gotta pay us to play that game online it's a free game chill but I buy Rainbow Six Siege on online for five dollars and so because I paid five dollars for that game I now need to pay for online service to play that game online. Yeah. And it, and it's almost like you're penalizing me for paying money. And it's almost like it, remi- it makes me think of like Apple. Like Apple just makes shit expensive cuz they know look, <laughs> you you going to buy it, you know? And if you don't got it then if you don't got it then you're not you don't got it and you're not going to buy it, but if you got it, you're probably going to buy it. And so it kind of like it reminds me of a, a debate I used to get in in like the early iPhone versus Android days when people used to be like, "Oh, that's why that's why uh, Angry Birds is free on the Android store and it's a dollar on the Apple store. And I used to be like, well, one, Apple doesn't decide that. The people who make Angry Birds decide that. They don't yeah. think that Android users will pay a dollar for something that Apple users will pay a dollar for. They and basically so, say, yeah, cheap. And so that's kind, of, <laughs> that's kind of like what this is and it kind of like how it makes me feel. Like it's like, right. so because I pay for my games, I have to pay for internet, but you're not going to charge people who play games, free games for internet. Fortnite. Like, that shit is so ass backwards. It makes absolutely no sense. And, but, but here's the thing. They're in a bind because that offering isn't just for internet. That offering gives them at games with gold and gives you two, like two or I don't know if it's just two anymore, but they give you free Xbox games. Same way with mm-hmm. PSN, you get like three, the three, two PS4 and now a PS5 game. Uh, and so like, that's cool and all, but I don't even play any of those games. I don't even remember the last time I I, I always redeem it because I'm a redeem it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna not take this free game, uh, a free game that I can't even play if I'm not subscribed <laughs> at that time. Right. Because um, if you lose your subscription, you can't play any of those games anymore. But that's yeah. not here nor there. Um, I don't know. I think that's it's super stupid. I, and I also then I think also I play games on PC. And every mm-hmm. single game I play on PC, I don't pay for internet, including the Xbox games that I pay on play on the Xbox store. That if I paid for, if I played it on Xbox, I'd have to pay for internet. It makes absolutely no yeah. sense. No sense. Yeah, I felt I didn't realize that was a thing. Obviously, because like I on the PlayStation, the only game I really played online was Fortnite, and I think that maybe because it's really done through Epic versus it being done through like. But Sony all, and but Xbox all games are like that. Call of Duty, they host their servers. All these games host their servers, so it just makes you wonder, like, what the fuck am I paying you sixty dollars a month for? And so, like, yeah, don't get me wrong. In the time it was introduced, in like two thousand two, two thousand three, when like mm-hmm. you had to install something in the back of a PS two to get internet, and broadband internet was just becoming a thing. I could understand this concept that I needed to yeah. pay more money to get a good service, especially. When PlayStations was free and it was garbage and Xbox charged and it was really good. And so that's why PlayStation started charging and then PlayStation got better. And so like it kind of justified that this is something that we need to pay for. But Mm -hmm. to be honest with you, in the year 2020, do you really think it's justified that we pay for it? No, and that's why... I was gonna say I was I was genuinely shocked that uh, Nintendo decided to join in on that scheme. That yeah, hell yeah, because it makes absolutely no sense. Like I shouldn't have to use the I shouldn't have to pay to use the internet to play Animal Crossing with you. You know what I mean, or with whomever. Like that's not a game that requires that. It should just you didn't do that when I was a kid and I had a Game Boy. So why are you doing it now that I'm an adult and I have a Switch? Maybe that's why because I'm an adult with a Switch. But um, yeah, even Dead by Daylight, I don't know if you know this, but on any console, you actually, it's its the same thing. If you just buy the game, you, you can't play online with anyone unless you have a subscription, as specifically from Sony. And 
when me and my sister found out about that, we were like, we just spent 40 something dollars on this game and we can't even play it play. unless we have, yeah. we spent an additional $10 on this service. Yeah. And since we play it so much, we don't really see it as like, oh, this sucks. But like, it's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It is. And it's it, just it, ridiculous. It is, and like I said, it's super hypocritical. Very. Say, oh, you're playing a game that's free. And I mind you, these games that are free, Fortnite, Apex, Warzone, they have the largest user bases. So if yep. you're talking about maintaining servers and like a large part of this cost going to that, you should be charging them for to use yeah, servers. Yeah, not us. If, you, if, we're, if we're being like literally honest, right? Like if that's yeah. what the money's going towards... They're the ones who are using most of the servers, but you're not right. going to charge them. And you're going to charge, gonna charge us who are actually paying for the games. That's and, ridiculous. And I'm, and I'm assuming that my $60 I paid for Call of Duty is going towards the expenses that, that they yeah. you know expect to have for their servers. Mm -hmm. Like, get the fuck out of here. I don't know. That's I, I think that's the conversation that really needs to be had. I think I think we for missed sure. the ball. We, we settled. Or, you know, <laughs> we settled. We let them say, oh, for yeah. like no. All games. They need to get rid of Xbox Live Gold. Games with gold just needs to be Game Pass. You don't get games. You, mm -hmm. Internet's free. You don't get games unless you have Game Pass and you create tiers of Game Pass. X amount of games with this tier. All mm -hmm. the games with this tier. I don't know what that looks like. But just get get rid of play, of games. Same thing with PlayStation. PS, PlayStation Collection. I mean, like, I don't know. Do you, do you expand the service and do you continue giving us games every month? But like, I'm I mean, tired of paying yeah. sixty dollars a year just to play games online. I uh, think it'd be different if every, if for Sony specifically, like if they did, if like every month, the three games that they give you, like at least one of them is worth it. You know, for like across the board, I sometimes don't think that they advertise for everyone. I think they just advertise for a certain type of person or a certain type of player. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just also sometimes it's just games that like no one genuinely wants to play. It's, and I think that's yeah. just the issue. Neat um, games. Unfortunately. Yeah. Neat, it's, 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 yeah. Really good games, I think. That yeah. like if most people who think they aren't wouldn't be a fan, if they gave it a try, they'd be like, oh shit, mm -hmm. this game is actually really fun. Um, yeah. Like I felt that way about Bug Snacks. Don't get me wrong; it's not a draw dropping <laughs> game. It wasn't something I ran no. to go play, and I didn't finish it. But uh, I felt about Astro's uh, Playroom. Nah, like I, I thought it was game. just nah, that's, that's a fun game. game. That's, that's really a fun game. They need to that's make that. They need to make a whole game of like. Fun. I honestly, uh, I stopped. Uh, the boss is kind of hard, so I just well, come I'll put on, it down. Come for, on. I just put it down for a minute. Right, but uh, but yeah, so I don't know. But I wouldn't pay for Astro's Playroom. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. I, it's a fun, but I just wouldn't. Platformer? If it was like forty, like a like a 20, like a Crash. It was like twenty dollars. No, it'd have to be like a Crash Bandicoot platformer. It'd be forty dollars. Guarantee. Like maybe I'll think about it. That's, I would I, think about it, but I'd probably catch it the, on sale. That's what the VR game is. Of people say like the VR mm -hmm. game is is like that. Platformer. Um, yeah, it's it's a platformer. This was kind of like a shrunken down version of that game, actually. So people are saying that like there should be a sequel to to it to that off this hype that has been garnered it's off of making a really good demo. Um, yeah, it's a good it's a good experience for those who haven't played it and they have a PS5. And if it's you're a PlayStation fun. fan, they poke that nostalgia like a motherfucker. Oh my gosh! So good, so good. Oh my gosh, so nice. Yeah. I was smiling a lot as I played it, which is like the very time, hysterical. The whole time I was like, "Yo, this game is so great." I felt like a I know kid. I was like. Oh, like yeah, bit. yeah, this is so good. This is so good. Yeah, so yeah, really sh I hope they make a platform. It sucks because like I know the, a large part of the reason I, I like that demo is that nostalgia feeling that it gave me. That nostalgic. Yeah. Feeling. And if they make a platformer, I don't. I'm not expecting that from that platformer. I, I would expect that it has its own story and its own drive. Uh, yeah. Even though, like, I do expect maybe they keep the flowers as the shapes of the. Of the control yeah. buttons and things of that nature, but there aren't going to be, there is going to be a random Jack and Daxter, or like a random, you know, Horizon character. You know, like I, I don't expect that Jack, to be an, yeah, an, an no. original game, and so that feeling I don't think is going to be there. So, yeah, I don't know. But it was cool when you play through it because like you get those elements and you're just like, oh my god, I've played Tomb Raider, or like I play this, I play that, and so or Crash Bandicoot. Mm -hmm. Like it's just it's just cool little incentive. Yeah. Um, and it was a great play on the dual sense controller and too. And the level building too, like the oh, joysticks yeah. and the bumpers being like 
like yeah walls and stuff it was it was really well done really well yeah done. it looked Great. so good it looked so yes good. for sure uh look at us still talking about astro's play for months <laughs> so good uh all right and um i guess last but certainly not least you mm. know what's so funny about this <laughs> we were just talking about him like a week before like the surface or not surface but like you know people started talking about this but um, if you don't know who we're talking about, Ninja, uh, <laughs> you had to get close. You had to get close. This is a big deal, though. But this is big because it not only includes him, but like the rest of us as like what, no matter what type of like platform you have, if it's large or not, it's just something that needs to be talked about. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in regards to him, he's just he's just a douche. Apparently, I guess. Like, I mean, uh, in, I, I mean was there any was there any evidence there to think otherwise? Not really. So no. But um, he fooled us for a minute, though. Yeah. I, listen, listen. Uh, bomb. <laughs> and then, yeah, that little dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got us. Uh, but yeah. So you know. So Ninja feels that you know, um, him, ha- him having as large a platform as he does is not a reason for him to have to. Uh, be responsible, feel responsible for uh, setting a good example for children who come onto his stream. And I don't want to like paraphrase a quote, but like he said this quote about like somebody coming into his stream and like saying the N word and like him thinking, like just taking that as like people trolling and like not really like mm-hmm. responding to it or doing anything like that. Again, not feeling like he has any responsibility to. And. Mm-hmm the wider part of the internet, the greater part of the internet disagreed. And I disagree. Um, because largely you cannot expect to, because basically you leverage these people's attention for money. That's, that's basically what you do. And so you're okay with leveraging their attention and you're okay with basically cultivating a negative space or a, a negative space being cultivated there. And you're just like, ah, what am I supposed to do? Like, motherfuckers just stream. What the, what the hell do you mean? What are you supposed to do? Uh, you're supposed to set the tone. Like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> and so, so yeah. So, couldn't be more wrong. And if you have a platform of any kind influencing any amount of people, it is your responsibility and it is your job to set the right example to wh- whomever is watching your shit. Like, what the fuck? Like... Yeah. My God, like, it's, I know there's kids who watch him who have more respect for him than they do, like, their own parents and shit like that. Yeah. And you want to talk about, like, you have no responsibility? Fuck you. That, that, that's absolutely, yeah. absolutely wrong. Bonkers. Absolutely it's just, wrong. it's it's so crazy. Um, and, you know, Ninja has had a lot of different things that he has said in the past. Oh, and he can't um, game regarding, with women. can't game with women. Yeah, regarding female. And, and as, a, as, a, right, as a woman... Yes. I wouldn't even want to bother playing games with you because you're a toxic individual when you do play games. And the last thing that I want to deal with is a, a 30 year old. Uh, I think he's like 30, almost 30 cry baby, um, yeah, child, literally. Um, and quite frankly, it is your responsibility, regardless of who you are to make sure that you let it know whether or not you agree or disagree with something as serious as white privilege and racism because that's at the end of the day what he was talking about Mm -hmm. um and as a white man it is your responsibility to have that conversation about your white privilege because only you can speak for it like you i can't speak for it you can't speak for it because we're not caucasian at the end of the day um we're people of color we just see it and we're like are you gonna address it and apparently he doesn't see it yeah he doesn't see it but look at he's not look at his success to address it Look at his success as like a gamer. He's literally like the what people th- when people think of gamers sometimes that's the person that they that's think of. Person. They don't think of me and you. They don't think of the people who watch us or just any person of color. They don't think sometimes they don't even think of Tim the Tatman. And although he is white, they still don't think of him. They just think of Ninja. And I don't want that to be the person to represent us as like a a whole generation of people or just like a whole collective of people that play video games because there's so many different kinds. But beyond the the people who come into your chat that that say all these racist things, it's it's as if he doesn't care about those kids that are affected by it, those kids of color who probably look to him. Yeah, yeah. Because we all started out the same way, probably. Like we watch something because they're the most popular, not necessarily because they represent us and the way that we look. 
And there's still kids who walk in on that. And I don't think that's fair to those kids. Yeah. Um, and especially if you have little female gamers, it's really not okay for them either. They're going to think, well, Ninja will never play with me. Ber- that's messed up. He berates women. Like, oh, yeah, he does. I feel bad for his, his wife. It's absolutely bonkers. I feel bad for his wife. Uh, I was actually watching dream yesterday and i just felt really bad because she seems like such a cool person a great individual but then you have to remember who she's married to i always i always i tell anybody this i find dudes shady like any dude who cannot give you like a straight up answer as Mm -hmm. to why they cannot be friends with women like or like like or even tries to explain why men can't be friends with women that is a dude you need to fucking stay away from that, for sure. That shit is super weird, bro. Like, why, for sure. why can't you play video games with women? What the fuck are you talking about? And uh, that people are going to make a big deal and try to say that, like, y'all are on something because y'all are playing video right. games together? You are a child, my guy. Right. Like, you are a fucking child. Yeah, like, Beyond that, yeah, you're, you've tried that. to fl- <laughs> And then you don't yeah. entertain that. And then exactly. you move on. And you can play with Pokimane and Valkyrie if you want to. No one's going to sit here and even think that oh, they want unless you. It's, unless it's in a group. Unless it's in a group setting. Oh, <sighs> oh yeah. My God. But then, you, you'll, then he'll turn around and shit on people like Myth for just because he's, he, they're them. He's, he's himself. He's talking as if like the plane spin the bottle and we sent them to the closet together or some shit. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up, bro. Like, it's just it's playing funny. Video You're playing video games live on stream. <laughs> Not even in the same room. Like, you're in separate fucking places. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Like, oh my God. Right. And it's such a, such a horrible precedent to send, too. Because it's like... Especially like, to like, men, yeah. Like, like you said, like, he's he's the household name. He's the he's mm-hmm. the face of, of gaming, so to speak, right now. And right. the face of gaming feels like he can't play video games with girls. Nick. And it's so That's toxic. so fucking toxic. Like, that is so absolutely insane. Um, a lot of girls don't even, like, growing up, like, you. that's something that you probably weren't even, like, competent in telling someone that you play video games because of men are just mean sometimes. And they're like, well, you're a girl, so you must not be good. And then when you I mean, shit on them, you get the whole, uh. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, like, that's part of the reason why, like, I even approached you after, because, again, if you don't know, <laughs> let's know because oh, yeah. we got high <laughs> at the same time. We were actually in the same training. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, we did the, they were doing the, oh, go around, you know, tell us your name and something <laughs> about yourself. And so they got to Alyssa, and Alyssa was like, oh, you know, my name's Alyssa. Uh, and I love video games. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that <laughs> is so left field. And like, it's not left field because it's something that like, I think is far fetched or unreal. Or, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg says your mic is low. Oh, my mic is low. Really? Oh, I don't know. I didn't change anything. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. Okay. Wait, continue. All right. Maybe it's I'm okay. hoping it's Greg. Maybe, but, <laughs> but like I didn't think it was I didn't think it was out of this world because it was something that was far fetched a woman playing games mm-hmm. or, or anything like that. But it like you said like like being open about it is is even a big deal. Like being able to talk about yeah. it and express that because like how many safe spaces are there? Like how you know like how many times mm-hmm. would a woman feel like if she did express that in a room that a lot of the guys in the room would have been I guess like would have been like. Yeah, she like video games. Okay, all right. Yeah, she <laughs> plays play video them. games. Sure, she does. Sure, she, she does. plays the Sims. <laughs> yeah, if I plays a little Sims here and there. Uh, I do play the Sims. And so, and so, I think that's. I think that's. I. I think that's. That's a huge point. That's. That's a great yeah. point to make. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. It's not just like women, but it's just like. It's just everyone. Like. You have a wife, dude. Also, me and my friends were talking about this, and I was just like, he flatters himself a little too much. I don't know what he thinks. But he is not the hottest streamer out there. <laughs> not anymore. In my opinion, it was just I mean, short lived. In mean, my opinion, it's Nick Merckx. So. Oh, he is. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, but on like American front, like when you look at like global numbers, it's kind of crazy. Oh no, yeah, I know. Since he's come back to Twitch, he hasn't even been doing very good in comparison to what he used to do. Yeah, but I mean, like even, like there's like this like some. Some Portuguese kid hit two million concurrent viewers on Twitch oh, the other day, and that's astronomical. What was he like, playing? And so Anything? The, he he plays Fortnite, and uh, I wonder, but I he know, doesn't really play much, Fortnite like that. I don't know much about that. I don't know much about. I don't know much about him, 
but mm-hmm. he has his own skin. And so like he was in he was oh, revealing that's his so skin. Cool. He was revealing his skin and he had two million people watching. And so that's like amazing. somebody put up a chart, I forget his name, but he's like big in the esports world. Uh he had put up like a chart of like the most viewed uh streams. Mm-hmm. And in America, the highest is when Shroud came back. He had he had had he had like five hundred thousand people watching him. But then like wow. globally, this dude has gotten like seven fifteen seven fifty before, and now he broke that. Bro, he broke the whole record. He was the first with a million, and then he broke two million. He hit. He eventually ended up hitting two point four million people watching him at a time, which is wow two more than two times. Uh, more than two times the previous uh, the previous uh, number one but anyways that's crazy globally Twitch is pretty fucking huge and like I know that we think like these American streamers are huge like Nick Merckx Tim and like Shroud and Ninja but like yo these guys like these guys like don't hold a candle even to like these South American Spanish speaking like the Spanish market for Twitch is huge Uh, yeah I'm sure yeah Greg said he doesn't play Fortnite anymore. He lost his kid following. Yeah, but, I, but I still feel um, like he, he maybe had like 40, 50,000 people watching him play Fortnite. He has like 30,000 people watching him play Call of Duty now. I don't feel like oh, he's... Ninja? No, Nick Merckx. I feel oh, like, Nick Merckx. I feel like if there's any... If, Wait, I think I, I thought Greg was oh, talking about Ninja? Ninja, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's like talking Ninja. about Nick. I never thought Nick had kid followings, to be honest. He's very uh, vulgar in the way he speaks. I do. So but... I didn't think... I do, but I think I think he still did because of Fortnite. But oh yeah, for uh, sure. But the, he, Nick, if there's any streamer that left Fortnite and maintained a certain plateau of success, like didn't dip at mm-hmm. all, is Nick Merckx. Yeah, I know. Everybody else has about, a, or it may be Tim. It may be Tim, and that's probably because Tim is so closely like connected yeah with Nick. like they still play call of duty a lot together and they stream a lot together um he was talking he was about ninja, talking, yeah. yeah so he was talking about yeah, but i think that also has to do with ninja because i think even with this this kid you're talking about now if ninja never left I, not that this wouldn't have happened i think it could have but like tim wouldn't be i think tim was always the better like of the group that, of them that like yeah. was hanging out all the time and we would watch Tim was just the better of the personality. He's entertaining. He's yeah, hilarious. Nick too. Nick was just like aggressive, but like in the funniest way. Um, and you knew it was like douchey, but you knew he wasn't like actually a douche. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with Tim. Tim was just hilarious because he's not the greatest at video games, but he has a good time. No. And I think when Tim blew up, he deserved that. Yeah. Because he was underneath not only Ninja, but like Courage and like other people's shadows and he just deserved that shine for a split second um and it's the same with nick i think that they're just good guys and they try to have like a good time and you know and have fun versus ninja i think ninja is getting what he deserves with like not having as many viewers because the way he left twitch was disgusting in my opinion and then you have to crawl back almost because mixer no longer exists i guess uh i guess if i could to point to like parallels between like their kind of careers is like mm-hmm. Nick and Tim have built their success off of who they are on Twitch. Yeah. And like their personalities, how they play their games. Like Tim's Tim's bad at most <laughs> part of like the draw to like hey. Yeah. And like how he how he behaves in in response to those and things and stuff. And where like Ninja a lot of pop culture things have made Ninja popular. Like Ninja was one of the first like pretty good Fortnite players, and that ended up making him the person that ended up playing with Drake and Travis yeah. Scott, and yeah. and then that's how Fortnite blows up, and that's how he blows up, and and then it's a lot of pop culture happenings that yeah, for I don't sure. that you don't see other streamers in doing. the same way you well, see Ninja doing. Um, yeah, and it's and it's Corpse. part of and it's part of because companies want to work with Ninja too because he's the most popular oh, yeah, one, right? Like so, like what's Ninja supposed to do? Say no? Like no? Um, no he's gonna say yes. But like, while that's happening with Ninja, while Ninja's doing this and et cetera, et cetera, Tim is growing because he's Tim, and yeah, like he's Tim, and Nick's so growing because he's because Nick, he's Nick. And that's it. Like he's growing because he's Nick. 
and he's a badass Fortnite controller player and like he's a cool dude he's yeah kind of he's so good and he's just growing and so like they built these foundations and then so like with ninja we built these like layers with him but they were mm-hmm. like just kind of like superficial layers like like oh yeah he, he played with drake one time yeah but we could toss that to the side and didn't really mean he anything. With Travis. didn't really mean yeah. anything to us you know what i mean like it was just a blip in time whereas yeah. like tim and, and nick Merck are like personalities that really mean something to us and i felt like yeah. that might be something that got lost with ninja at least it was with me like ninja was just yeah. ninja was novelty watching you know ninja mm-hmm. for me sometimes it was just entertaining seeing that a hundred thousand people were fucking watching somebody at one point yeah and i couldn't even believe that that was actually happening um yeah so yeah so dr lupo uh, greg mentioned dr, dr. lupo, lupo I too. Do dr. dr lupo was in there too but dr yeah, lupo also think, still doing his own I thing though different. like yeah i think like he's, he's so really different known for his he's really known for his charity streaming and yeah and he's a huge i don't I say he's a huge he's variety so streamer i feel like he's geared down on on like the games he plays now more than he used mm-hmm. to uh even like the fortnite games um he doesn't like really do that days rather but I'd even say, like, I, I would even argue that Dr. Lupo has, like, cemented who he is. Yeah, he's Twitch. just different. And, like, like he had an all-day, you know, shout-out to, you know, VJ be doing. But, like, you know, he had, he had an all-day <laughs> event that he's been doing, like, he does every year, where he, like, raises yeah. two, damn, two fucking million dollars for, for, for St. Jude's. Jude's. And so, like, that's who he is. And it's just, like, yeah. when you think of Ninja, when you take out Fortnite, what else do you think about? And, like... And that's so important in the reason why he's at where he's at right now. Yeah, and I don't want to say, say that's why he's disgruntled and, and shit like that. No, he's like, like you're being a dick. He's bro. always been like yeah, that. He's always it's been just like that. It's just been like this whole. Fa- it's, it's been a facade. Honestly, really it's call it what's so that? Much a facade, but yeah, it's facade, like yeah. it's just like what come what I don't know. Like what's that phrase about like it coming to light? Whatever darkness, light, something. Um, it's it was eventually going to show itself. Like yeah. his true self going to gonna show. Yeah, it was going to show. And those people who were just genuinely themselves. And also to mention, Tim and Nick have their own relationships. It may not be with like your Travis Scott's, your Drake's, but they have their own relationships with the people that the celebrities or yeah, professional football players that they admire. And that's the only thing that's like cool. Like that's the coolest thing about it. It's just like in a small way, they get to have that same type of celebrity status that ninja has or whatever mm-hmm. but i also just think ninja's a sellout so that's me but it just sucks because i think i was I watching his his wife last night to a certain extent to get that big that true fast. to get that big that fast you can get yes. that big without selling out yeah she's gonna yeah. Take, she's gonna take a while because yeah okay, for don't sure. be a lot of people you can't fuck with um, yeah for sure but yeah no 100 percent. i feel bad for his wife i was watching her stream last night she's a big uh dead by daylight player she's actually yeah. Yeah, she's pretty good, and it's like it was fun to watch. I saw and I appreciated that the killers her are first community. person. I never knew that. Why did yeah, I killers see, first. Why did I see Killer's perspective for the first time the other day? <laughs> I have never seen someone play a killer before, yeah. the other day. and it was just off of like a viral clip of some like some streamer that like ripped somebody who came into her stream. Yeah, yeah. First player, first it's first person, and then like survivors third. Yeah. So it's that's cool. It's, I it's think that's fun. cool. I think that's a little cool. But yeah, it's it's sad because I think that she's she's cool, and I, I think her community like was cool. They don't really bring him up, which is nice. But I feel like she could definitely be bigger than what she is too. Yeah, um, if a, she was she's just known, manager. she the one to make all. Mm-hmm. She made. She's the one that got the ship flowing. You know. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't mix that, but that's just me. Yeah. Things go south, then. What you gonna do? That's why. That's why. Well, I mean, that's why he's not that's talking why. to other women. He's not playing he's video games. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks every girl wants him. So. Oh my god! Such a fucking loser, man. Jeez. Literally, Jeez. it just shows his insecurity in himself. Wasn't under pressure to talk about racism because Listen. he is an American streamer. I don't remember the same energy towards PewDiePie. I don't wait. Um, Someone just. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't, I don't know if it was under pressure. I don't know if it's if it's so much under pressure, but to have a nonchalant perspective on, on. What goes down in your community? What's allowed in your community? Mm-hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think there's something to be said about that. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it wasn't so much an attack. I mean, it, it, it's because it came up of something that he said in an interview. If the interview was about, was yeah. from Poodle Pie, 
I think we'd be talking about him, and that just you know, yeah, what it is. He's just he's just a topic of discussion this week. To be honest with you, uh, yeah. As for PewDiePie, I mean, I don't keep up with him. Yeah, but, I don't keep up with him, but I hear he's another. Yeah. You know, he's had his yeah. he's had his shit. He has, you know, yeah. And so us, we definitely had like our probably when it was happening, we had our own opinions about it as well because it's it's either way, it's just sad to see, and no matter who it is. Um, it has nothing to do with whether you're American or you're not. It's just you have a responsibility with a big platform. It could be Dashi or Corey Kenshin, and they're both men of color. Does not matter. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Still, something that needs to be said uh, and addressed. Yeah, because even some people of color deal with that. Yeah, doing the wrong. Yeah, so. Um, but I, uh, I will say there's, there's a, there's a, I don't want to say a complex, but like a perspective or, or certain. There are, there are certain dynamics between like being American and, and being from somewhere else and having a perspective mm-hmm. on that conversation. Um, because, yo, like, I, I mean, being colored anywhere around the world is something. It means mm-hmm. something. Like, I remember I went to Italy a few years ago and I was just disgusted by the way some people would like look in my direct. And like, it's just like, why are you looking at me right now? Like, why are you staring at me right now? And then like you look around and then you realize in that moment that there isn't really anybody who looks like you. And that's why yeah. people are fucking looking at you. And it's just like, yo, that shit is so uncomforting. And so I know that colored people deal with things all around the world. But I, mm-hmm. I still feel like there is a difference between being black here and being black in other countries. Because, oh, for sure. Because the way, the way being black in this country has been demonized and, and, and things of that nature is disgusting. I mean, I tell people, Jim Crow was like 56 years ago. That was not that long ago. I mean, like if you're like 20 years old, your parent is likely 50 years old or older. Like that, was, that wasn't that long ago. And then Jim Crow ended 56 years ago. That didn't mean that the next day people just stopped being racist and people stopped being bigots and that people just, you know, like, like that those ideologies just went to bed and just went away just because legislation changed. That shit never changed. I mean, people are dealing that people are dealing with that shit today. You know what I mean? And so like, hey. and so I feel like things are different. And that's why like, I've, if to, to that person's, you know, point, that's why it may, it, it may feel different. Like we come, like we attack people like American celebrities or American voices more, but it's because like these people are here. Like they're in the yeah. thick of it, and and he's directly benefiting off of American yeah. people who are watching him. Yeah, I'm sure he has international viewers for sure, uh, but I'm sure a large majority of them are American, and he lives yeah. off of the privilege that this country. Now I don't want to say has given him, but offers him. Uh, yeah. Through the way the country is governed and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we just talked. You just talked about it with fucking GameStop shutting shit down <laughs> because poor people are making money. I mean, yeah. You know, they keep showing their face, and it's just like, yo, I don't know how many times. Yeah. They gotta show it to us for people to see. Yeah, and as for energy, I think like it doesn't matter. Like, if there was not the same energy towards PewDiePie as there, or like any other creator that there was towards Ninja. Um, Unfortunately, the stuff with PewDiePie happened a couple of years ago and we weren't in the same place we are today when it comes to that. We were still pretending as if it didn't exist. But when we heard it, we were very affected by it. Um, and obviously, like to what Mondo said, uh, PewDiePie is not from America. And so it's probably just different. And it was also just totally different circumstances. He used a slur a racial slur. Uh, Ninja did not, to my knowledge, but it was more or less the people coming into his community and him having, I think both still have a responsibility to make sure that they are doing what's right because kids do come across their content. Kids come across everything. The internet is just at the, their fingertips. So, Forever. Um, yeah, uh, either way. Um, and that's, why, and that's why we will always try yeah. to you know, set a right example here, you know? Yeah, you know, push, for sure. Push the right message. And we're not trying to attack Ninja, but we're just saying like he's a grown man and he needs to own up to just like making sure um, that gonna, he it, is doing his part. It's like it's like what I said about like promoters and like, you know, DJs and, you know, venue owners in the beginning of like the pandemic. And I'm going to bring up the guys too, the other the VGA guys. When when the pandemic started, we were originally supposed to have a, a brand launch party in like April. And so like in March, we had all like started going home and staying home. 
And so the guys were still thinking like, yo, we could probably still have this party. And I was like, no, there's just absolutely <laughs> yeah. no way we're going to do this. One, I just don't think it's going to go well because like of all the circumstances, you know, everything that was happening, people still weren't taking it that serious. They weren't e- either. Uh, I think that was like before, uh, that was before like they had announced that like, you know, venues over 500, you couldn't do anything anymore. That was before they had done those mm-hmm. things. So like people were still like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen. And it was just like, no, like, yeah. like we have a responsibility to people to keep them safe. That when, mm-hmm. when we throw an event, when we when we organize something, that they don't have to worry about anything. That this is a place that they can be comfortable. This is a place that they don't have to worry about catching the Rona. Like, like I'm not trying to like, in, like have fucking hand sanitizer bottles. That like we eventually realize it's it just, it just ain't enough. Yeah. And so like why why would I want to be in that position? Um, it's kind of like that. Like it it's your responsibility. It's your duty. Like I'm like promoters out here having fucking party. You don't give a shit about the people who are coming to your parties, because if you did, you wouldn't be oh. having these parties. And like it's your responsibility. Oh. It is your responsibility. And I I feel like people don't people want to reap all the benefits and want none of the responsibility. And that shit is yeah. just fuck. That's that's basically what that situation is. And it's, yeah. It's a trickle down and, and a bunch of things. And mm-hmm. it's just like yo like you don't care. You don't care. And like, yo, no. and, and I get it. And I, I it's so hard because I understand that like some people don't have it. And like, I get it. Like you could be a promoter. You could be a venue owner. It doesn't mean you have dispensable income. It doesn't mean you have unlimited money, even though you might, you, you choose to flash it in certain ways for, for clout or whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. But like, I get all that. <laughs> but you still have a responsibility and it's bigger than all that bullshit. It's bigger than for all sure. that stuff. Because that shit is all bullshit. But the problem is, is that we won't all sit down one day and just... Just acknowledge that it's bullshit so we can move past yeah. it. Yeah. No. And I live in the land of they don't yeah, want to sit down. Yeah, so. <laughs> the land of that. Yep. Yeah, LA. Of- yeah, it's, it's- I didn't still realize that over there. I mean, <laughs> everybody really beautiful out here. Like, they really be trying out here. Like, what is up? Mm. <laughs> you you appreciate, I think the, the lifestyles you, you appreciate it when you're not from here, especially when you move. I think when you live here as an adult. Um, I think it's easier to handle versus growing up in this Mm -hmm. because I couldn't imagine having to go through life not knowing who is authentically themselves and who just wants to be something or someone. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's just sad to see to play on the whole situation. You know, you guys could have definitely made a choice and a bunch of people could have gotten sick in that at that one event yeah, and you I guys told, thinking told them, oh like, we're all fine i'm like yo like you really trying to risk a hundred people getting the rona and then exactly. that and then that coming back to us and i was like imagine someone's grandmother died i'm like now i'm responsible for someone's <laughs> grandmother <laughs> yeah. dying i'm like i'm like you going to sleep with that you going to sleep with that i'm not and i yo and i I had, told, I had told my it. girlfriend at the time, and it never got that point with the guys. And maybe mm-hmm. they'll, if they listen to this, they'll know. I was <laughs> going to tell them that they're going to do that event by themselves then. I'm not doing that event. Oh, for sure. Because it's just bigger than that. And you got to realize yeah. where responsibility meets what the fuck you got to do. And yeah. what we had to do was not have that event. And we ended up not having yeah. it, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it's just persuaded. It's pop- and that, yeah. I always use that as leverage now. I always use that as the <laughs> y'all niggas wanted to have a fucking party in a pandemic. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's my that's my go to now. This and then it, it flipped itself into what what you guys have today too. Yeah, which it is flipped so into awesome. what we have today, and it's beautiful, a hundred percent. Yeah, it's 100%. even better. And once we get past, if we ever get past this, um, hopefully we do. <laughs> uh, it'll be even better in person because then these things can take place in real spaces and you can interact with people in a proper way. That's <laughs> not too over the top and like in each other's yeah. butt, but you know, it, it, it it's just, ah, it's 2021. It's going to be weird for a little while. Yeah. We're going to be, I think, not like nobody. This. You're getting this, you're getting this. What's good. What's good. Ah, I just, I, well, I got a, I got a double mask where I'm at because we got a new strain. Oh, so. yeah. They, oh, they said we got to wear a double mask over here too. I was like, yeah. excuse me? Yeah. We got a new strain over here in lovely California. As so. if it wasn't already hard enough to breathe. Don't get me wrong. Keep, keep yeah. my face warm during these, these harsh, 
Yeah, it times, is cold here too. But yeah. Come, sh- stop talking. No, about no, 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 no. It actually I'm is cold. I'm tired of hearing like... people in 40 degree weather tell me somebody it was who was something in like, the other night. It was, it was like in the, the it, it was like going to the low 30s and at the other night. Yeah, it was actually really, really cold. At it's night? been cold. Oh wow! And it's raining too. It's so like, like it's like single digit weather over here at night. Right, I don't miss. It. <laughs> I went to the fucking I I went to the bodega earlier and I regretted it. Like it's that kind of weather now. We're there now. Did you wear sweats or no? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm wearing sweats right now. Thank you, Ange. It's a different type of cold. Like I used to talk shit about it too before I like lived here, but it is actually cold. It's just the transition. There's like it's a transition no... from day to Yeah, like yeah. there's no it's not like it cools off. It just goes hot to cold no, and you're like no. it, it's and then it just feels cause here, don't get me wrong, it's going down to like zero degrees. But since we're only yeah. ever getting up to like twenty something now, I'm just used to this shit, you know? Yeah. Get out there, it's whatever. It's the wind. It's the fucking wind, man. Like, <laughs> Forty degree weather in LA is yeah, beyond no, brisk. I, I feel that because like I used to I used to spend summers in DR and I remember like mm-hmm. I remember some nights in DR I'd have like a hoodie on brick. And I'm like, it's why cold. is this happening to me right now? It's like fifty <laughs> degrees. But it was because it was ninety degrees earlier yeah. that day. So no, yeah. I feel I feel that. I I feel that. It's not the same type of cold, but it definitely is. No, it's not the same type of cold, but it's cold, yeah. It's Uh, cold, yeah. It's brisk. Yeah, it's like a brisk cold, like a wind, like a chilly cold. Oh my God. Like a spring, like, yeah. yeah, Over here, it's like, yo, that that wind was slapping me. (laughs) That wind was like, you really want this bag of chips? You said. You really want this bag of chips? And I was like, (laughs) I do. (laughs) I do. I took my ass to the store. Fuck. Um, all right. Uh, I don't know if we have anything else. Do we have anything else to go over? Um, no, not really. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen new episode tomorrow. Oh yeah, yo, That's your it. new number one anime. We'll talk about that's my new number one episode. Yeah, we'll talk about that on the next one. Okay. I need everybody to like read the manga though, because I didn't think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I gotta gonna... find out what happens because I did not imagine anything that wasn't dark or ghouly or. <sighs> Or it is it is dark. Ominous like I think that's that. a I think that's the misleading that's thing about jujitsu. Yeah. Okay. I think it's okay. very much shonen, but it's very dark. Like character like I said, we were talking off stream, but like characters that you think are just like uppity and great and then they just have like these dark, pitful moments yeah. and you're like, Oh shit. Like y'all are fans of certain people. And I'm a super <laughs> fan because I love to see people lose their shit. I love to see I love to see characters just lose their shit and like not give a fuck anymore and be like I don't give a fuck I could die today I don't give a shit <laughs> alrighty who cares so yeah new episode of Jujutsu Kaisen uh, skate the infinity this weekend too and I think the promise Neverland today okay oh I do have something attack that new Square Titan, Enix game Attack on Titan on Sunday oh yeah Attack on Titan on Sunday. Uh, that new Square Enix game, Balan Wonderland. Balan Wonderland. Mm-mm. It's like some new Square Enix game. They did, had a demo release today, and it's not getting very good reviews. Yeah. And it's a Square Enix game, so that gotta, was something. You know, I never really thought about it, but they put out a lot of games over there at Square Enix. Mm-hmm. You know, like because like it's not like it's like it's not like it's like Activision or like Ubisoft where like. They have like these like sub studios making games for them, and like don't get me wrong, Square Enix does that sometimes, but they also make a lot of games just straight up Square Enix, you know? And yeah. it's kind of like, damn, bro. Like I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe slow it down, maybe just you know, Calm maybe, down. maybe take a break, lower the catalog a little bit. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. But I I saw it this morning on someone's stream, and I was like, oof, it didn't look good. Okay, all right, noted, but... noted. We'll see. Yeah, outside of that, I don't think I have anything else. Um, I don't have anything else either. Uh, shoot, I don't know. All right, this this is just gonna be just gonna close this bad boy out. Yeah, just another week. I think uh, you know, um, Luigi's been bothering me about getting on the podcast. Uh, so oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we'll bring him on next episode. Uh, next episode, okay. I'd like to do the the Dead by Daylight. Um. Yeah, we were gonna do that tonight, but yeah, um, but AOC's thing ran late. Yeah, you now it's also it was morning. just a lot. Yeah. Hopefully next week is a slower <laughs> news week, and we just have less to talk about. We can spend a little more time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play a little Dead by Daylight next week. Oh yeah, Mondo's gonna try to play Dead by Daylight for like the first time ever. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. I'm not gonna, gonna touch good. the game until that. Day. <laughs> 
Oh and God! Okay. It's gonna, day. it's gonna be so. Oh, cool. I'm gonna hear screams and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> "Yep." Mm-hmm. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. I gotta. It's gonna be good. I gotta make a. La- <sighs> you should get. Is Brandon gonna play too? Having a four stack makes it a little bit easier, especially yeah. if you play it. Like, oh, yeah, just come because. One hundred percent. We'll get that. That's easy. Dead by Daylight is like the lobbies for that game is just trash. Okay. Just trash. Oh, so and you're you in the lobby for a minute. Team, your team loaded up and have your team, and then um, yeah, as early as we can probably do it because like the lobbies. Yes. Okay. Right. I could just add you guys, and well, I'll just hop in again. Okay. Alright, cool. Oh my. Hmm. Sorry. He's tired. Sorry. It's Yo, okay. It's... I'm tired too. I, you know, I wish we could do these earlier, but it's all right. <clears throat> He's got work. Um, yo, but I'm that we're gonna close it out, y'all. Um, yeah, for sure. Shout out to once again, always everybody who's in the chat watching live. Um, appreciate y'all. If you don't watch live, we record these live Thursdays at 10 30 p.m. Eastern, 7 30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and shout out to everybody who's listening later on YouTube, podcast services like Apple Music, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, What's that thing called? iHeartRadio. Radio. Yeah. <laughs> and other services too. Uh, yeah. Google. Yeah. Probably. Google Podcasts. Yeah. The whole show. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, this is episode 12. I don't know what we're going to call this one, but it's been a wild week. Something about, we'll stocks. Call it, something about stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a play game on stocks. Stop. Yeah. Game stonks yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, game oh stop. my God. Yeah, there Wall go. Street Bulls. Yeah. And you know what's funny? I'm, I'm going to close this out on this. I cannot believe. Then I've read a bunch of things, seen a bunch of tweets, seen a bunch of people talking about it. And all the disrespect for Wall Street bets. When you make money on that, on that, uh, on that Reddit, on that subreddit, you mm-hmm. call them tendies. Chicken tenders. Like like chicken, <laughs> like chicken, chicken dinner, like winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. They call them tendies on that subreddit. They are walking out with tendies right now. And Let's go. if you're still holding on to GameStop. I'm not a financial advisor again. I'm just saying shout out to you because you're fucking the man right now. And I love it. Yeah. I love it. These assholes yeah. have to buy shares tomorrow. Keep making them cry yeah. tomorrow. Keep making them cry. I want to see Billy. Keep making them cry. cry. That shit makes me. me too. That shit. Man, that shit turns me on. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, more billionaire tears, more money in our pockets, more attendees. Um, and yo. Y'all, y'all be safe out there. Y'all have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, uh, weekend, beginning of your week, whatever time it is you're listening to this. And yeah, yo, deuces, y'all. Yeah.